Hey guys and welcome back to the show. If this is your first time watching, my name is JP and I'm here to show you how you can make your very next game. So in our first part of this series, I showed you how you can use the get request to either get all objects or get objects by ID. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can do all the others. There's the delete, the put and the post that we still need to cover. It's not going to be as long as the first part because the next three are a little simpler to understand. Be sure to subscribe and like this video if you like what's going on here. Let's jump straight into the code. I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do. Alright, so here we are within the end of our last video when we implemented the get all and the get by ID. So what we're going to do now is when we click on get to get more detail of one of these posts, we're going to be implementing this put, this delete, and if we go back, this post over here. So let's go again into here and let's start off with the delete. Now, once we have this ID, this one's one, what we can do is we can tell the server that we don't want this post anymore. And when we click delete, because we have that ID stored in our global note ID variable, it really makes doing this quite simple. So let's head to the implementation of the left mouse pressed of this delete button and make things work. So let's head over to delete. Let's add a create event, as we always have done before. Here we're going to say delete equals undefined. Very good. Next, let's add a left pressed event. var map equals ds map create this is going to be our request map next we need to tell the request that um, we're going to be sending json so ds map add i'm going to add something called content type and that's going to be application forward slash json just so the server knows exactly how it can uh, interpret the data we're sending it. Delete equals HTTP request. And here we put in the address of our request. We can get that from our get. It's going to be this. Scroll down. Paste that in there. So again, jasonplaceholder.typeycode.com forward slash posts. And here generally we put the ID. So I'm going to say plus string open bracket global dot note ID so that's the identifier of the note as you can see there it says HTTP request URL method header map and body so this is the URL which is going to be appending the note ID to the end so that could be one could be two could be three could be whatever the method is going to be a delete just like that next I want to know the header map well that's this little guy that we created over here And lastly, the body is going to be blank. So sometimes in some RESTful APIs, it requires that not only do we send the identifier of the object we want to delete, but we also sometimes need to send the entire object back. So if that's the case, that's where you'll put the object, but obviously you're going to first need to convert it to a DS map and then encode it to JSON. This allows the server to then verify that the object ID we're passing through in the URL is the same as the object we're trying to destroy. There's a little safety net. So just keep in mind that that might be the case. Not so much with the server that we're communicating with though. So that's okay. Next, when I delete um, the object, in this case, I want to make sure that I'm making, I'm deleting the note detail in the room that we're in. Because he's no longer required. He's old news. And we are loading. So when we do this, it's going to be sending off the request. And while we wait for that response, let's delete the note detail in the room, which is the room info. So this little question mark. And then let's make sure that our animation is displayed. Then we're going to add event asynchronous HTTP. As we've seen before, let's go and actually grab it from one of these guys. Let's grab all of this. Paste it in, I don't need that for now. All right, async load is delete. So this, de this delete variable again comes from our create event over there. So if we intercept a response, it happens to be the one we're looking for. If that response is good, then sometimes we will get some sort of text response. Um, in this case, I don't really care about it. So I'm going to say global.loading equals false. And then next room, go to RM profile. So we're going to go back 
to the profile screen. If it carries on loading and we don't go back to the profile screen, it means the result failed. In that case, it'll jump down to here and you guys can handle that in whichever way you feel necessary. So you can show a little message that says, I'm sorry, the lead failed, please try again later. Maybe what they sent through wasn't exactly in existence. Anything can happen, you just need to manage those failed responses here in the else. So I'm just gonna go back to the left press and go over again one more time what I meant by sometimes you'll need to pass in the object. So we actually have this note object stored in these global variables. So right now it looks like this. ID is global dot note ID. Body is global dot note body. And the title is global dot note title. So if it requires us to also send the object back to the server so that I can do validation between what we're sending in the URL and what object we're sending, what you could do is you could say DS map create and I'm gonna call this one var note. Next we want to say DS map add to the note map. The key is going to be ID and the value is going to be global note ID just like that and so on so we're going to do this for one more over there another one over here this one's body this one's title and I mustn't forget that there was another property here called user ID now the object has to be complete because on the other side there are going to be some model validations where it makes sure that the properties in the model that we're giving it are identical to what it expects so in this case my user ID is always going to be one. Um, I'm the only guy that's using it right now, so that will work. The title is going to be this guy, and the body is going to be this guy right there. Okay. So once we've converted our variables back into a an object, well, a DS map in this case, we can say var JSON note equals JSON encode, and we can pass in the note map, just like that. And then obviously afterwards. DS map destroy the note map and we take this guy and we put it under here Actually, we can put it right at the top and so we don't get confused I'm going to call this map the header map and then again afterwards we need to make sure that we're destroying the header map like that and we take this JSON note and we paste it here at the end that's our body it's the same as this DS map only it has been converted into a JSON structure that the server can then read it'll then match this note ID property to the note ID that we're passing through over here so in my case with the server over at JSON placeholder or type code it doesn't really need this object come back so I'm gonna put that as a blank string but now at least you guys know how you can do it just in case the servers that you're communicating with especially with your deletes are expecting not only the ID to be in the URL but the same ID is going to be in that complete object security measures like this you'll probably find in areas where certain objects have certain privileges um, whereas we are user ID 1 we have access to this note with note ID 3 but we might not have access to notes with note ID 17 and in that case, when we pass this through, the server can then check that we're not sending through a bum request saying that I want to delete note 17, but the object I've actually got is an older note or a different note. So in that case, it'll automatically fail. These are one of many, many checks that the server side should be doing. Okay, so let's move along. Um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and just comment out these guys because it's not really required. But what I will do is I'll put this in the project files as sort of like a little tutorial how to in text of how to do it if you come across this situation. So let's go ahead and test this out. And if we are navigated back to the profile screen, it means that the delete was successful. Again, because this is just a placeholder um, API, it doesn't really let me delete things on the server. It still sends back a positive response. So in that sense, that will complete what we're trying to achieve here. All right, so let's get all again. Let's choose number five, get. All right, so we've got five, we've got some detail. And if I push delete, it's going to be doing a request. It's going to be sending that five to the server. And if it's successful, if the server allows, and it says it would 
have deleted it, quote unquote, it should delete the notification, the loading animation should stop, and we should be navigated back to our profile screen. So three, two, one, delete. Loading, 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 success, we're back here at the profile screen, which means there wasn't any errors, and that was a successful request. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna show you how you can create a new note, which is called a post, which is an ad request. That's what's gonna happen here from our main menu when we click post. So let's jump into that post. I'm actually gonna copy this left pressed. I'll show you exactly why. I've just noticed that I could save some time here. Copy, post. Again, let's create post and set that to undefined. Then I need the left pressed event. I'm gonna paste in the code I got from before. So because I don't have any uh, input output boxes in this, I didn't want to further complicate the situation. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be creating or constructing um, a raw object just here in code as if the user went and typed in a new post and clicked, well, the add button or the post button in this case. So I'm gonna uncomment this that I put through earlier, which is exactly what I wanna do. And I'm gonna rename these to new note. So I'm creating a DS map called new note. It obviously doesn't have an ID, so I'm gonna nuke that. The user ID is me, so that's a one. The body is going to be, this is a new note body. Simple as that. And the title is going to be the best note ever. Cool, so that's how we're constructing this object. Now in your case, you also need to create a DS map. You also need to add properties to the map. Be sure that you add in the correct properties. Again, servers will be doing model checks on the properties to make sure that they are A, in existence, and B, of the right type. That is, if they're not nullable, obviously. So we've got the body, we've got the title, we've got the user ID, exactly everything that JSON place all the type of code needs when doing a post. And here I'm gonna say new note, JSON or new JSON note actually and that's going to be encoding the new note DS map and then we can destroy new note good then the header map is identical we are still sending JSON as the content I'm going to move over here to the right so firstly it's also posts get rid of that forward slash we don't have an ID because we're adding a new guy so delete that here the method is post the header map is the same. And here at the end with the body, I am going to send through the new JSON note over there. Very good. And while we're waiting for this, let's go ahead and delete all object notes. And let's also delete all object get by ID buttons over there because we're still here on the profile screen. So, and then we can actually make it load or gets nuked. Loading goes, 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 and then if the loading animation stops spinning, it means that we have successfully created a note, quote unquote, and can then get all again and, and so on. So let's go back. Make sure you're destroying your header map. Let's rename this to post. And let's wait for our HTTP response. I'm gonna go to delete. Let's steal some code from here. Paste it in. Okay, so if our response is our post, and it is successful, then I'm just gonna store the response here for fun. In the sense of posts, what would normally happen is the response should, if following normal RESTful API standards, be the identifier or the location of the resource that's just been created. So if we're creating a note in this case, our string should actually be a note ID of the newly created resource that we can then use to query it or see that it is created. So in this case, I'm just gonna set Loading equals false, we're not going anywhere else, we're already in the profile room. And when this goes away, it means yes, it was a success. Again, you need to handle your failures in some way that the user can interpret and try again, or maybe check something that they've done wrong. Okay, cool, so let's fire this up and see what happens. All right, so let's get all. And now let's say that we want to create a new note. When I click post, it's going to be creating that DS map, it's gonna be converting that DS map to a JSON structure, which is then gonna be sent as a post request to the server. And while we wait for that response, we're gonna see a loading animation. And as soon as that loading animation disappears, it means the post or the ad was successful. So let's go, let's create a resource, post. Loading, loading, there we go, loading's gone. It means it was a success, but it was a failure, we'd still see the loading message. 
So that's how easy it is to do a post. Let's go ahead and actually do the edit now. So if I get all, go to one of these guys and click put, we should be able to change some of the content. And I'll show you exactly how you should construct your object, your JSON object to send to your server. So back to the code, let us go to object put. Let's add a variable called put equals undefined. I'm gonna go to delete and actually steal the left pressed. Well, the post actually is pretty much exactly what we want. Copy back to put. Mouse left pressed, paste it in. All right, so in this case, we have the ID of the note that we want to delete. And we're gonna pretend that the user has typed in something else that they want to change. They wanna change the post uh, body or the title, maybe they made a typo, that kind of thing. So in this case, I'm gonna say, instead of new note, it's edited note. That's the DS map. So it follows the same theme. If you're gonna send an object, you gotta create a DS map and then convert that DS map to a JSON structure and then you're good. So the body is gonna be, this is a, well, this is an edited note body and the title is going to be the best edited note ever user id is still one again it's a good idea to send through the id over here in this case it's global dot note id let's call this edited note json and it's going to be the editor note that we're converting to json and once we've done that and have the JSON structure of that edit note, I can go ahead and delete edit to note. Cool. Header map, identical as this. The content type is still JSON. This post is going to be called a put. And in this case, what we need to do is I need to have forward slash plus string of the global note ID. All right, so that's how URL constructed. It's not a post, it's a put now. And we need to put the edited note in the body, just over there. And in this case, I'm gonna just say, well, object note detail, I'm gonna destroy that guy. And let's set loading equals true. Make sure we're deleting the header map. You can just run through the left press again. We're constructing the note over here, converting it to JSON, creating a header map, and sending over that request. Oh, this guy actually needs to be the JSON edited note over there. Cool. And we're destroying the node detail and setting load into true and waiting for that response. Then add event, asynchronous HTTP. Let's wait for this response. Same as our delete, basically. Copy, put, paste. In this case, it's a put, P-U-T. If it was a successful put, we can check out what this response is just because we're curious. Maybe there's something there we need to use, doesn't matter. Setting the loading to false. Then we're gonna be moving back to the profile room where his node should no longer exist because it's deleted. And then again, implement your else so that you can tell the user that something happened, the edit failed, and he needs to try again later. All right, so when we test this out, if we click put and we find ourselves back in the profile screen, it means everything was successful we got a successful response, status zero. So save, fire this up. Let's get all. Let's choose number seven. And if we click put, we're gonna see a loading animation. When that animation disappears and we find ourselves back in the profile screen, it means that that edit, or well, the put in that case, was successful. So three, two, one, put, loading, loading, loading. Back to the profile screen means we got a successful response. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions on more awesome videos just like this, please let me know in the comments or send me a PM. I'll get back to you. Maybe we can make something happen. If you want to help support this channel, please follow the links in the description to my Patreon campaign. I really do appreciate your support. The project files can also be found in the description as well as some other links that can help you understand what APIs are and how you can utilize GameMaker's HTTP request functionality. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.